So now that you've seen static cast and dynamic cast, let's in this video explicitly compare them just so you can drive home the differences between the two. Notice here we have base, as we've seen in previous videos, and I have this virtual function simply because um, runtime type identification won't work without uh, of at least the presence of a V table. So that means dynamic cast would not work. Uh, I have derived one, which inherits base, and in here I just stuffed some integer, and notice here in the constructor I initialize that integer to zero. And then I have a, a function here, I call derived one function, a specific function to derived one, not shared in the base class. Uh, and all it does is announce itself, in fact I should probably trace the proper function name here. It announces itself, and then afterwards we print the value of some data. So, since there's no getters or setters for some data, some data should always be zero. Okay, so here's drive two. It it adds nothing. It's simply extending base. So now here I'm going to say base star b gets new derived one. And I'm going to delete b here just to teach you good uh, programming practices. So the static type of B is a base pointer. So all the compiler knows is that B is going to point to a base. Now the runtime type or the dynamic type that B is pointing to is derived one. I could easily, just as easy, put a derived two here because both inherit base. See the base class here. But I'm going to put derived one here. So then um, now if I want to say derived one pointer D1, gets B, well, the compiler is going to complain and say, hey, um, B is a general type, it's a base type. It could be pointing to a derive 2 for all I know. And so the compiler, this, th this requires us as the programmer to step in and say, compiler, I know what I'm doing, even if we sometimes don't. But, but it requires us to step in. We can do that with one of two casts. Ideally here we'd use a dynamic cast, but since I absolutely know that yes, B is pointing to a derived one, I can save some runtime by saying let's 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 uh, do the cast at compile time. So derived one star. So there we go, and then um, I can say D one uh, derived one function works pretty well, and let's just run this. See, there's our trace statement we had. And then I should have a 1 there. And then um, the value 0. Again, here's 0 because some data we assign to 0 when the constructor executes. So I'll just put the 1 here. All right, so so that's good and dandy. Now what happens if I go drive 2? Well, certainly this is a safe upcast because a drive 2 inherits base. And so a pointer to a drive 2, a base can point to a pointer to a drive 2, essentially. And, but here, though, look, I'm saying, hey, compiler, I know what I'm doing here, even though I really don't. I'm doing something quite dangerous. So when I call derived function, derived function relies on the presence of some data. So this code will still execute, but it's executing with the memory of a derived 2, which has nothing in here. There's nothing. So when we say some data, it's it's going to take the address of which would be there had it been there, but it actually isn't there. So watch, watch what happens here if I run this, and we get garbage. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. In fact, I can, I can even make this a little more interesting. Here we can say, uh, let, let's do give this this uh, derived to some data. Let's give the same structure as the derived one, but instead I'm going to say. Um, other data. You know, the name doesn't really matter. And then public, let's make a constructor derive two and say other data gets five. So now in this memory location, which so ha oops, which so happens to line up with the memory location of some data in derived one, I'm going to stuff a five. So now watch what happens. Let's let's run this. And we get a five. <laughs> Even though derived one is running here and it's pr technically printing out some data, well, this memory address here uh, represents the same memory address of what really is other data in derived two. In fact, just for tickles, let's uh let's step through this one. So f10, 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 f10. I'm gonna step into derived one function, 
and really some data it's it, the only reason it's five is because it so happens to line up with this other data here so anyway hopefully you see this is static cast if if you really don't know what you're doing then don't do this it's undefined behavior um, so the better way to do this is with the dynamic cast which pushes the check at runtime so then again let's step through this f10 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 now notice d1 here is zero. It's all zero. In fact, that's why we have some data is question mark, question mark, question mark. It's not pointing to a valid instance. Zero is a special pointer value, which means it does not exist. It's null. So when I turn around here and I say, well, D1 derived one function, well, now I'm going to invoke a function on a null pointer, which will bomb and blow up. Um, that's why when we do a dynamic cat, we want to check the return value before we do anything um, with that pointer. So that's why we say if D1. If D1, meaning if this is not zero, then yeah, sure, the, the dynamic cast worked out, the runtime check, it checked at runtime, everything was good, then yes, uh, we can invoke this function. Otherwise, uh, oops, I'm still debugging from the previous session. Otherwise, uh, we'll just skip over that and not do it. So again, let me, let me just change this up to a derived one here, which it really is. So now this time, the uh, cast will succeed. And D1 will not be null. It'll be 0x00364DD8. So that's not zero, so it's safe to run derived one function here. And again, we see the zero here because that is the value of some data that we assigned in the parameter list constructor. So anyway, interesting things. Hopefully, if you're confused, that's probably good. Uh, rewind the video a couple times, step back, think about it, type this up yourself, play with it. But confusion probably means, hey, you know what, this is kind of technical. This is hard to understand and that's it's actually probably a good thing because you really don't want to use runtime type identification. Avoid it as much as possible even though sometimes it's a necessary evil.